In our last video, our last two videos actually, we dealt with research. Uh, when, as we dealt with research, we, we learned what, what are, how do we get it, how do you go about the process of researching for something, and then really how do you decide how you're going to use the, that research? What is the value of that research? In this video, we're going to make a, we're, we're going to make a shift. See, we're still dealing with the concept of invention, which was developed by Aristotle in order to understand how we prove something. And as long as we were dealing with research, we were talking about inartistic proofs. But there's more to proving something than just gathering up supporting data. You've got to put it together in a useful way. And so, in order to learn that, Aristotle also developed the inartistic proofs. The inartistic proofs are the useful way in which we can develop our ideas and our thoughts and our concepts, or how we can take those all together and ultimately prove something. And that's what we're trying to do. There are three kinds of inartistic proofs. There's logos, uh, which is our logic. Uh, the Greek word logos is the word we use to talk about it, and it's how we put our thoughts together in a logical way. There's ethos, which is our character. We get our word ethics from the Greek word ethos. And then there's the pathos, which is the emotion. And uh, I guess we get words like telepath and empathy and sympathy from the Greek word pathos. Today what we're really going to focus on in this little video is we're going to focus on logic. Okay, we're going to focus on logos. And there will be two videos following this to deal with uh, ethos and to deal with pathos. But right now we're going to deal with logos. We're going to deal with logic. Logic is so important for people to, to learn before they do their speeches. It was something that took me a while to figure out. See, when I first started writing and, and thinking in a serious way in college, I didn't always get good grades. And it puzzled me, because I would go up to the instructor afterwards, and I would be looking down at my grade, and I would say, what's going on here? What's the problem with my discussion? And, and, then, and I'd say, see, I cited all the sources that you told me to cite. See, I was perfectly grammatically correct. I put these together in, in a format that you told me to. What, what's the problem here? And the, and the instructor was like, well, okay, you can see you're dealing with some really good ideas here, but you're not putting them together in a way that made sense. It always made sense to me. If it makes sense to me, why wouldn't it make sense to you? And it wasn't until I took a class in logic that I really started to understand how to make things make sense to my audience. And that was when I learned logic. Logic is a way of putting things together in such a way that what you say proves what you're talking about. Sometimes people will misuse the word logic. They'll accuse somebody of being logical because illogical because they disagree with them. And that's not that's not what logic is about. Really, logic isn't anything about do you agree or do you disagree. Logic is about the syllogism. What is the syllogism? Well the syllogism looks like this. If you say because this is true and this is true, therefore this is true, you're putting together a logical statement. That's why you say if you agree with the premises, you have to agree with the conclusion. And you might be wondering, why am I t making my fingers do this funny thing? Uh, here's the reason why. On your screen right now, hopefully, you're looking at a, uh, a couple of logical syllogisms. And you can see those three little dots pointing down. Okay, those three little dots pointing down mean because. Then you'll see it towards the bottom of each of these examples. There are two examples on what you're looking at right now. 
that towards the bottom of them you'll see an arrow pointing to the top, and that is I call a therefore. So in the examples you're looking at right now, because all men are mortal, and Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. Because all life forms contain carbon, and because Tom is a life form, therefore Tom contains carbon. All syllogisms work like this. You prove something logically by showing that it's all of something, or most of something, and then showing that what you're talking about is a subset of that. This is a logical thought. Now, things don't necessarily have to be true to be logical. Uh, what if we went, all boys have short hair, Fabio is a boy, therefore, Fabio has short hair. Well, if you know who Fabio is, you know that he doesn't have short hair. And he's definitely not a woman. Leave us with probably he is a man. If we take these, these logic, it's not true, but it is logical. Why? Because if you accept the premises, you have to accept the conclusion. All cows eat grass. Your mom is a cow. Therefore, your mama eats grass. See, there's an example right there. Uh, you might say that you disagree with one of these premises, and that's okay. If you disagree with one of those premises, you can throw out the conclusion. But as long as you stick with the conclusion, you have. As long as you stick with the premises, you have to agree with the conclusion. That's how you can tell if something's logical. Now, there are some fallacies of logic, and there are actually only three true fallacies of logic. And those are what we call a non sequitur, affirming the consequent, and denying the antecedent. Okay? A non sequitur is where you have three points, but they don't prove your thesis. You have, you have two, two statements, or, or three, or four, or ten, but they don't prove what you're ultimately getting for. Uh, I live in a house, my dog has a dog house, therefore construction jobs are not declining in America. What? Uh, that doesn't prove anything. This has nothing to do with each other. This is a mistake a lot of students make in their, in their public speeches. They'll get up and they will give three points and their points will be true. But you listen to those points and they never proved a thesis. That's not what I want for you. I want you to be able to give good public speeches. And in order to give good public speeches, you've got to make sure that your points prove a thesis. Another mistake that can be made is affirming the consequence. All dogs can swim. Dr. Klein can swim. Therefore, Dr. Klein is a dog. What? No! All dogs can swim. I think most dogs can swim if you toss them in the water. Some of them like it, some of them don't. But most of them find a way to get to land. But just because you swim does not make you a dog. People make this mistake sometimes. They'll go ahead and say, well, you know, uh, where there's fire, there's smoke. I see smoke, so there must be fire. The smoke could come from other things. Maybe people having a cigarette. Not necessarily a fire. You need to keep these things in mind. Another mistake people make is denying the antecedent. So the consequent, what we talked about before, that's at the end. A consequence of being a dog is that you can swim. So let's go ahead and start with that one. All dogs can swim. The antecedent is all dogs, and the consequence is swim. All dogs can swim. Dr. Klein is not a dog. Therefore, Dr. Klein cannot swim. What? No! See, a consequence of being a dog might be that you can swim, but just because you're not a dog doesn't mean that there might not be other ways of getting that consequence. So those are some, some mistakes that people make. There are also a few mistakes that people make when they, uh, when they try and, and interact logically. And these are situations where 
the statement itself might form a perfect syllogism because, because, therefore. Uh, it might really form that, and it might be a valid syllogism, but in one of the becauses, there's a statement that you kind of have to hold as suspect. Probably one of the most common examples is the ad hominem mistake. Ad hominems are basically name calling. So you might say something like, oh, the governor is a jerk. I don't like jerks, therefore I don't like the governor. That's actually logical. Except when we've got this thing, well, what is a jerk? You've just called somebody a name. You haven't proved anything. Calling somebody a jerk, calling somebody a pinhead, calling somebody an idiot, writing somebody off as a loony, saying that they're nuts, saying that they're crazy, saying they're a jerk, saying they're, they're stupid. All of these things, just making this statement and putting that somewhere in your argument, Boy, for reasonable people, we feel like we need to throw that argument out. Another mistake that people will make is the slippery slope argument. The slippery slope argument, what's that? The slippery slope argument is something like, oh, well, it's sometimes called the camel's nose argument. Because if you let a camel stick his nose into your tent on a cold winter night, before long he's going to get his shoulders in the tent, and before long he's going to get his hump in the tent, and before long he's going to get his rump in the tent, and before long you'll be sharing your tent with a camel. We know that this is patently ridiculous. There's a common children's book called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and the reason that people read that book to their kids is so that their kids can look at slippery slope arguments and say, yeah, this is not inevitable. This is silly. And then yet, when we send them to junior high, we feed them a slippery slope argument, don't we? If you smoke a cigarette, before long you're going to be drinking a beer with that cigarette. Then, cigarettes, beer, Leads to smoking marijuana. You're going to be smoking marijuana, aren't you? And then you know, you're smoking marijuana, and before long, marijuana is not going to be good enough. You're going to need some LSD just to keep going. So you're going to do a little acid, and that's going to be pretty nice, right? So you're going to think, okay, might as well take some prescription pills that are prescribed to me. You start popping pills, and then eventually you're going to be... You're going to be wanting to do some cocaine, sir. Doing a little cocaine, and that's getting you high and everything. But you think, you know, I know I can take this to the next level. Level, You start smoking crack or shooting heroin. Before long, you're holding yourself out on the street at $2 a pop. Do you really want to smoke that cigarette? This is a slippery slope argument. It's ridiculous. And whenever anybody makes a slippery slope argument, you have to reasonably throw it out. We also have false dilemmas. False dilemmas are another time when you really need to throw out a lot an argument for as being kind of illogical. False dilemmas are when you say something is either this or that, and really there are other options. A common false dilemma that you'll hear in the United States is people being asked, so you're a Republican or a Democrat? There's the Green Party, the Tea Party, the Libertarian Party. I have way more choices than Republican and Democrat. Okay, this is just, that's ridiculous. So you throw it out. It's either this or it's that. You know what, sometimes they really are choices. It's either this or it's that. Uh, I either have a quarter in my pocket or I don't. I don't anymore, but I did. Uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this, is, this is just crazy. And whenever anybody uses a false dilemma argument, Reasonable people will throw the argument out. Another common mistake that people will make is something called a straw man argument. This is where you get up and uh, you argue about something and somebody presents a point of view and instead of attacking their point of view, you tie their point of view to something else that's easy to beat up. In the United States, we really like to beat up 
Nazis and communists. Those are, those are pretty obvious strawmen. It's not always the case. But, you know, somebody will come in and they'll say, well, you know, I really think that the government should help out the poor. Ah, it's socialism. And you know what happened in communist Russia? Yeah, but that's not what I'm advocating here. Somebody gets in and says, you know, it would be really good if we started having kids wear uniforms to school. But break. Ah, that's fascism! What are you, some kind of Nazi? No. See, whenever anybody starts to throw out these straw man arguments, we have to reasonably throw them out. Glittering generalities are another mistake people can make. In one of the examples here, I had all men are mortal. I had all life forms contain carbon. These are things that are true. We really can say all about some things. But there's other things that we say all, and it's not really all. And so that makes us call into question the person's argument. Another mistake is a mistake that's called a to coke. Uh, it's sometimes colloquially known as a so's your mom fallacy. Basically, you point out a flaw in somebody's argument, and you say, yeah, well, so's your mom. We see this a lot right now in our political debates. Somebody will criticize uh, the president, and then the next person will get on and say, yeah, well, the president of the other party before him was just as bad. That doesn't defend the current president, does it? This is a two coke argument. This is a, a failure. And really, when somebody gives an argument like that, reasonable people just sort of throw it out. Another mistake that people make are ad populum. Uh, ad populum arguments are problems with the premises as an appeal to prejudice. Sometimes you'll hear this is what we call a plain folks fallacy. Plain folks are when you come in and you say, well, you know what, maybe people like those scientists believe something like this, but here's what the normal people think. So the fact that normal people think it makes it right, this is a logical fallacy. And reasonable people, when they hear a plain folks fallacy, generally throw it out. Another tool is the bandwagon fallacy. The bandwagon fallacy is all the cool people are doing it. Or, no, not, excuse me, that's the cool kids. Uh, the bandwagon fallacy is more and more people are doing it. More and more people are getting on Facebook, so should you. There might be good arguments for getting onto a social network, but the fact that other people are on a social network is not probably reason enough. The cool kids fallacy is another thing. Here's what the best, <coughs> here's what the greatest, here's what the smartest people are doing. So you should too. Well, sometimes the greatest, greatest or smartest are wrong. Explain to me why I should do it. Don't explain to me that somebody else is doing it and so I should too. <coughs> so we've looked at a few different things. We've looked at the syllogism. And we looked at problems that can occur in the syllogism, the fallacies of the syllogism, ad sequitur, uh, or, excuse me, non sequitur, affirming a consequence and denying the antecedent. And we learned about a few problems, a few fallacies that a person can make in putting together logic. If you can avoid the fallacies of the premise and the, 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 the ad hominem slippery slope, false dilemma, straw man, glittering generality to coke, uh, ad populum, and in all, its, uh, in all its various kinds. You can avoid those, and you can put together your thoughts in such a way that your points actually prove your thesis, like a syllogism. You're not going to probably have any trouble putting together a logical argument, and that's what I want from you. In the next two videos, we're going to continue this idea of invention. And we're talk going to talk about how to make our speeches emotional, and how to present a good character in our speeches. So stay tuned. I hope you're going to continue to like this stuff.